All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the guest list today, we have one of the most successful rock bands in the last century. This is one we've been waiting for. We've been teasing it for a while. We have motherfucking Nickelback on the podcast. Yeah. Gentlemen, how Thanks are we? Thanks for having us. Hey, man. Thank, Thank you for having us. I can't explain to you how excited. We literally have been teasing this because we thought it was going to happen previously through Zoom, and I'm uh, really glad it's in person. Here we go. New album dropping tomorrow. Correct. How you feeling? Great. Oh, my God. So get rolling. Uh, the process of dropping this album as opposed to anything differently, like what has it been like getting ready for this one to come out? Well, I mean, it's 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 fun because there's just so much stuff going on. It was my birthday two days ago. Happy birthday! Thank Happy you. Birthday. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, yeah, November fifteenth. We were we played. We actually did because um, we're doing three of these shows, kind of like these little small underplays. So we played uh, like a 2,000, 2,500 seat or whatever it was at Drake's Club in Toronto. Ooh. It's called History. Great sound system. Like Hell this yeah. sound system in there, obviously it's Drake, right? It's just ridiculous. What is it? Do you know? What is the sound system? Yeah. I have no idea. Loud and fantastic. <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, decibels for days. Um, yeah, so we got to do that and, and uh, you know, knock the dust off. Remember what it's like to stand on stage? It was our first time in like three years. Wait, nice. so that was your first show back post COVID? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Three wow. Years. Yeah. yeah. We've been holding out for a while. You've so. been holding out for Drake's club. Yes. Literally. <laughs> yes. As Canadians, do you guys have a relationship with Drake? I've never met him. Really? No. Yeah, we're, he's Toronto, we're Vancouver right? and he's Toronto. Oh, uh, is that a robbery? No. It's just a long, <laughs> no, way. It's just a long ways away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, we, yeah we just don't, a, we don't get there very often. Yeah, it's, there's a country in between us. I mean, yeah. I'm sure if we were hanging around there a little bit, you know, you'd get the chance to I would it. love the Drake-Nickelback collaboration. I feel like the world's been waiting for that. I'm down. It, it could be cool. If, if Drake cool. wants to get in a room together, I would, I would love that. Do cool. you guys ever do collaborations? Yeah. Like, what was the what's your favorite collaboration you've done? Like, was there any weird crossovers where like we wouldn't expect it? Like, I could picture yeah. like Nickelback, Lil John, like was something like that. Like, we did uh, we did Flo Rida. Flo Rida. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? Stop. Yeah. When did this happen? No. Uh, two albums ago. The record was called um, No Fixed. No Fixed Address. And what was that tune called? It was called. It's got me running around. Yeah, you got me. Running oh around. shit! Oh, there we go. Out of nowhere. There you go. Dude, dude. From the clouds. <laughs> yeah. I know wow. Nickelback better than Nickelback. No. There you God, go. you God just it. spoke in my yeah. ears. He's like, <laughs> got me running around. What the hell's wrong with you guys? Is that what you? Dude, I wrote the tune and I couldn't remember it. Like that was great. Wait, Wait were, you, were you in the room with Flo Rider or was he, this like? I, I watched him write it. Hey, really? He sat there just like. Is he not one of the fucking nicest guys ever? Sweetheart of a human. Isn't being. he? He's like sweetheart. You would not expect it. He is like. The fucking coolest, like most down to earth, mm -hmm. yeah, nicest. Because he's guy. one of those guys that could go one way or the other. Like, could be either oh, yeah, super yeah. nice or super full of himself. No, and I'm glad awesome. to hear he's a nice guy. It's wild though to, like, to watch him work because I thought he was just gonna go in and kind of wrap this thing and, and you know, that'd be it. Yeah. So he goes in and he starts off and he's like, you know, dun 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 dun, dun. and then he's like left side, dun 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 dun, right, go to the right side again. Let's double that one. Okay, let's go. Dun 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 dun, and he he like harmonizes the whole take, what? start to finish pans each one left and right and then all of a sudden you've got this wall of him coming in and i'm like i never knew that that's how he did it a like wall i was like flow it's rider. wild it was wild Holy and then shit. and then i'm like we need some horns but i don't i don't want like i don't want fake horns i want real horns and so the next thing you know there's a horn section and and uh like these guys had played on michael jackson's thriller and so it was fantastic. We just had all this stuff, and and uh, that song never saw the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> deep like, cut. That's yeah, a deep cut. I was. I really thought the way that conversation was going was, and then Flo Rida pulled a trumpet and a saxophone out and cut the entire right. thing oh, himself yeah, exactly. on the spot. Yeah, yeah. classically great. trained musician, obviously. Yeah. No. I mean, for you guys, like, what, so what are we in? Like twenty five years in? Yeah, we've got a yeah, quarter of a century. So I assume like there's plenty of these stories where it's like I can't believe I was in the room with this kind of a person, and I mean, looking at where you guys are now, like. Looking back, what was the first moment that you felt like broke you guys into the industry? Like, was there, like, I, I reminds me, like, probably is like your first moment, but like, was there the first moment together as a band where you were like, holy fuck, we're actually doing this? I mean, yeah, it, it literally was, you know, how you remind me. Like, when that came out, I remember uh, it, it was wild because I threw this party the night before and, uh, uh, and we just, like, it was, it was insanity. <laughs> Like, the cops showed up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and they're like, we know who you are, Chad. We're glad that you're having a party. It's great. The neighbors don't want you to stop partying. We just need the guy who's banging on that conga drum to get off the floor. <laughs> He's got to get off the roof. Stop. He has got to come down. Stop. You know, and, and it was my buddy, Bobby. He's up there, and I'm like, I didn't even know he was up there. <laughs> I look up there, and he's got a try. He's just like, dum, 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 dum. I'm like, Bob, get off the roof. Dude. For an audience, or was he just 
Rob oh, there's everybody was in the pool and he oh, was, I think he was so he was having an almost famous moment. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so I, I nice. the next day, uh, this girl drops me off at the uh, at the we're playing the Coliseum, uh, in uh, in Vancouver, and uh, there was so many trucks and buses. Like I couldn't believe it. It was just lined up, and there was all these humans standing there in the parking lot. And I look at our tour manager, Chief, and I'm just like, "Who the fuck are all these people?" <laughs> and he's like, "That's that's that's your lighting crew, that's your stage crew, that's your audio crew right there. This is pyro. That's your whole pyro department there." Like he just went down the line of all these people. And you and didn't I'm even like, know this was happening. No, I'm like, "Who's the big guy behind me?" They're like, "That's your new bodyguard, dude." And by the way, the whole tour sold out. What? And I'm the like, fuck? what? Yeah, and uh, and away we went. Well, so did you? So you guys obviously had years before yeah. you became famous. You had nope. years of cut. No, no, nope. nope. born famous. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> just from the jump street, just famous. But it's like going from doing those club shows and cover shows and shitty shows to all of a sudden you're like, I have a fucking lighting crew. Yeah, yeah. Was that like an adjustment? Or did you jump right into it? And you're like, no, no, no. This is my life now. Oh, uh, we I took to it pretty fast. We tried to. We tried to. <laughs> you know, hold on for the, dear life. The the, the the small venues are great when you're like. Uh, we're gonna venue down here and do something special for the fans. That's fun. Doing it, like slugging it out the whole time. It, it's so hot. It can be so hot and it cold. It sucks, when you, when dude. You, when, you, when you're not, because when you're playing those clubs, you're, wait, <laughs> you're waiting. Sucks. You're waiting. It sucks, bro. Yeah. This is my life. You're this waiting. Is what we're talking yeah, about. yeah, you're waiting to catch like a little bit of you know heat on this thing. And if you, if it is, if it isn't, doesn't matter. But it's like, it's just, it's just lots of like booze smoke. Or booze uh, stained carpets and cigarettes and oh, stuff. Yeah. Which, oh yeah, which is you know you you slug it out and you do it and it's great. Those shows are great. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, when we had a chance to like do our own thing, we're like, yeah, I don't want to go away from this. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> let's make this our make it our own. And Whatever. We really suck it all back in the show. Whatever we did to get here, let's keep this let's thing keep it going. <laughs> so, how did you guys come to be and that origin story when you guys you know were playing those shows? How did that all? Well, we come started out? like. I've known my brother for a while, um, <laughs> so he's the bass player. Um, but we we grew up in a small town. Like Daniel grew up in in Vancouver, but we were uh, the three of us, myself, Mike, and and uh, Dan, uh, Ryan. We grew up in uh, a tiny town in the middle of uh, uh, Canada called Hannah, Alberta. There's 2,900 people in this town. Jesus. You knew every like you knew everybody. Like it's more moose than people. Uh, uh, pretty much. <laughs> that was, yes. uh, you know, that's a, that's the kind of place where you know the, the motto is if you haven't heard a rumor by noon, start one. Right, <laughs> um, right, right, right. You know, um, and like you just know everybody in town, and and it was surprising how many musicians were in that town at that time. Like we, <laughs> we all wanted to get out of there, <laughs> uh, like badly. This is my this is my golden ticket. You got to rap or go to the league. Those are your two choices, that's right there. It. Yeah. That or you got to get really good at hockey. <laughs> um, yeah, and and uh, you know, so we we played in a cover band, and we had a singer. Uh, there was like we were five piece for a couple of years. We were not as Nickelback. We were called Village Idiot, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> um, and so, and we were good. Like we were good. That is a good band name. Yeah, but we like, but we could play other people's shit like really, really well. And, and you know, and, and so we were sitting there playing four forties and, and a fifteen minute tag yep. every single night. You 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 start to realize what pa packs the dance floor yep. and what like what you know makes everyone just like ah, i'm going back to my table and yep. you know you used to see it every single night for two years in a row like you're just you're like oh i'm starting to get this like i, 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 th I think we could do this <laughs> <laughs> this can't be that hard you know and 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 uh so but then we kind of broke up as the cover band and um and this is around what time nine so this is 93 93 probably 93, so 94 we, are you guys like that's grunge era for us is yeah. that like same for you guys up in, in yeah. yeah oh yeah i mean that was that it, it we when we were when we were playing the cover of things that time just kind of like cutting our teeth and playing it's like i had in the country we had one of those big giant dishes the satellite dishes mm. we literally had like i live in the country i had like two channels oh, two Canadian oh channels. wow yeah, that was it you Which, never had two channels yeah, you had more channels than anybody I know, <laughs> I, i'm explaining okay so <laughs> Like, we got this don't lie. we got this satellite dish. No, I actually didn't have that many after that, but when we got the dish, you got like if you didn't have that uh, that uh, decoder card, you can get like five more channels, but good ones. I had like there's a sci-fi and something else, uh, like some news thing, but then we had MTV. So I talk I was, soup. You I watched was, a lot of I mean, talk soup. Yeah. E, back then it was ETV, I think it was called. Yeah. Was. Um, but uh, MTV was like this is something that I could get and we would see these new artists coming out. So we were, you know, we would 
definitely urge Overkill when it first came out. Nice. And, uh, I was going to ask, and, like, who were some of your inspirations? Oh, and who were you guys playing at these shows? Well, because like that, a lot of we tried to do some really current stuff, kind of before it even really popped. That was the the MTV kind of influence in that sense. We're also doing but a lot of college we bands. So many college uh, bands okay. from the, from Canada, which would be like the Odds and the Doughboys. I don't know if you recognize how these. wild the Watchmen. It, uh, we're dating all of ourselves except for him. He's young. Yeah. But how wild is it that MTV used to actually break? Right break records actually yeah play like, music yeah, yeah. oh we yeah. play me not yeah. only play music but break, but break, but break them i know yeah. you oh, guys i, know. I found nuts. i yeah. found you guys when i was younger uh mtv2 it was the song from spider-man one <laughs> right yeah hero. Hero. Yeah. hero and that was my first introduction to nickelback and i fucking played that song until my ears bled dude i played <laughs> that song so many goddamn times that's awesome like that has to be kind of wild to think about like people who are you're, finding you're, you now your mom didn't figure out like what the hell i was talking about when i started off and i'm like I am so high, <laughs> I can hear it from. She's like, that sounds about right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's about Spider-Man. Yeah, that sure. tracks. It's definitely about Spider-Man. Whole thing's about. What is it about? It's, obviously, it's about Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Still a mystery. Wait, so right. did they commission you to do that, or was that just a song you guys made? Uh, that was just kind of me on my own. Like I brought the tune into the guys and we played it and it almost made it on uh, the record Silver Side Up that has How You Remind Me and Too Bad and Never yeah, Again yeah. stuff like that. Um, and he actually said, I, it's, a, it's a great song. I just don't feel like it's a Nickelback tune. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll just keep it. I put it in the back pocket. I'll give it to Spider-Man. That's Fuck you, of, dude. That's a sign of a great working relationship. Mm. By the way, it is no for real. He's, I, he's, he, he wouldn't hurt anybody's feelings. Trust me, he would no, just be like, "It's very Canadian song, of you, bro." But, <laughs> great song, constructive. Probably not for us. No, that's, that's, <laughs> you want someone to be honest with you yeah, without absolutely. you know telling you like this is dog yeah. shit. Like that, that's a good way, but that's not dog shit. That's a fucking. But as it sits as it sat by itself, it's just like the, the like he said the context of the lyrics. I know what he was singing about. <laughs> um, but so then when he when he took it in the end, he had Spider Man. The idea. Of, of that to that it's like i'm that yeah, works i'm very glad he waited for that because that's you know and perfect that's just fit. that's just like who knows but it's like what a great perfect what fit. a great match perfect it's, it's a song that's it's one of the fan favorites i mean sure. even looking back though and like I, I think what's interesting to look at your career and where you guys are now you've lived through the cd era the streaming era the limewire era oh like no, it, no 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 back up my first ever introduction to nickelback my mother had you guys on cassette? Yeah, she cassette. did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. Yes. Holy fuck! You, she would play you guys fucking constantly. What's your mother's name? I'm sorry about that. Chris. Chris. Chris? We love you. Yeah. Her. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the indoctrination of your son. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. That is right, because I I remember back we're uh, sending the gift basket getting... over as we speak. Hell yeah, dude. We we released the state the state uh, in Canada. That was our first. No, second full length, I think. Yeah. And but that was the first one was weird because we we made CDs of Curb the one before because we made them. Yeah. Like we made them uh -huh. ourselves. Oh, you press them well, yourself. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. when when Fuck. we signed no we signed with the label, we made the state. They they did it, and then they actually made cassettes, and I actually have a cassette. I was like, we literally made it under the wire of like we did make a cassette actually. Hell yeah. Before while the CDs I've never were still seen being made. That. That's crazy. I've got oh, them. I've got them home. Yeah, with, that's crazy. With the purple cover. Yeah, yeah. That's the original cover. Your mom's got like it's a different. bootleg Nickelback cassette, dude. Maybe it's it was. We had a big ass conversion van, like one of the ones where the bed because we had a big family. There was eight of us and shit. Um, but it, it, honestly, it might have been bootleg because we had a lot of bootleg <laughs> shit. In <the> family. <laughs> but uh, it had a CD rescinded. player and a cassette player, and she was. It was like as soon as it ended, rewind it and start it again. I oh, swear to God. She get it at the awesome. flea market? The flea market was great <laughs> to get food. It's yeah. crazy because, like, we would hear these stories about, like, uh, like, you know, there's troops over in the Middle East, and, and they're stationed all over the place, right? And the locals would, uh, I, I, I'm assuming they went on LimeWire or they went on uh, Napster or wherever the hell it was where they were stealing mm -hmm. music from and they would burn these CDs and they would just kind of write out whatever the hell it was and they'd sell them to the troops and these guys would come home with these things and it's like they were just buying these bootleg copies from the locals <laughs> and just like that's, Nickelback this that's and, fucking awesome that's yeah, how you know you made it I wasn't gonna yeah. air her out I wasn't gonna air her out but my cousin she was in the military and I, I would get everything on bootleg from when she was over yeah, there, there you go there you go and so if that's not I'm I would be shocked if that's where we got the Nickelback cassette from, but we used to get everything from Iraq, everything. Yeah, 
But I mean, I, it um, really is interesting to see like the fact that you guys, because this is all about the music industry. That's what our podcast is really about. It's like you guys have lived through these changes. Like, how much of a shock was it when the CD stopped becoming a thing, and then it's like, okay, we're worried about streaming numbers. What the fuck is this? Like, did you guys ever have that conversation, or was it like we've already sold so many CDs, it really doesn't fucking matter anymore? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I wish we were still selling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You noticed a big change quarterly. It was around 2008, 2009 when it really you started to see the impacts. Yeah. You'd see the quarterly statements coming. You're like, oh, I thought, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was supposed to be more. I'm getting point zero 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 one percent of what we used to make. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going it, on here? It was a weird transition, that's for sure. I mean, I think it started. In, what's Napster? T-shirt like, prices you know, are going right, up. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> right when uh, <laughs> we're doing 390 yeah. dates a year, boys. Yes. We're trying to keep this bottom line at the same there, spot. There, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's, it's kind of it's we we adapt after after a while. CD sales were already waning, and from then it was digital. And 2000, when did iTunes open up? 2005, 2007, I can't something exactly. like that. Yeah iTunes Store, which changed, and we were talking about it back then. That all the right reasons it was 2005. We're like, is this just? Are we just doing? Should we just do singles now? Because that's how people are just digesting. You can't playlist doesn't mean or like a like a mixtape doesn't mean anything. Where you're selling, you're selling a greatest hits digitally. It's like I can make my own greatest hits. You what said you that for about? you said that for 17 years. I still <laughs> haven't <laughs> done that approach. Every album is like we I'm should a, just do singles. I'm a procrastinator. What can I say? <laughs> like it was it was wild because. In 2007, when we recorded this album called Dark Horse, yeah. and we worked with uh, Mutt Lang. Oh, fuck it, yeah, ACDC? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's like, because we were, we were kind of talking about it back then even, he's like, you know what's really cool? When you record something you know, way back, at, and you get to sell it on 8-track, and then everyone goes out and buys it on cassette, yep. and then everybody goes out and buys it on CD, <laughs> and then everybody downloads it. And he's like, I've been paid for, you know, f minimum four times on every single thing. That Think I about how much money he made from Back in Black. Like, just of that one fucking album. It's the, oh uh, is it, uh, uh, which one is the highest selling? Is it, uh, is it the Black album from uh, Metallica that's number, the, the highest selling rock record, and Back in Black is number two? Or do they flip flop? Because it like might that. be like because ACDC Back in Black might be the highest selling rock record of all time. Well, you guys are the highest selling of the 2000 to 2009 rock bands, aren't you? 2000, uh, to, yeah, two, would, something bad of the decade. Yeah, I don't, I don't have I don't have the stats handy, but I mean, is it? That's I checked it. it. That's yeah, uh, I'll take that. Yeah, yes. I think yes, Bill, was, Billboard magazine great. called us uh, uh, the four idiots of the decade. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't Fuck I, them. That might not be the verbiage that was used. See, this is what's fun about us, though, is we are now doing music journalism in some capacity. But. Fuck those guys! Like we don't care. Like that's not what we're about. Like we're about like people we actually like. I'm. We're not here to like talk about like that kind of bullshit. Like mm -hmm. those guys say weird shit like that. Like that that has no, to. No, they be. didn't actually say that. Oh they, my god! No, no, I thought no, no, that was no, like no, a crazy no, statement. No, I was gonna no, say like, yo, no, no, no. no. It, He's it, paraphrasing. No, they, they, yeah. they, 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 we won the award of whatever the hell it's called. Like it's, something they called us band of the decade. Something. We, yeah. We most, sold the most amount of CDs or downloads or whatever from you know for a ten year period. Out of anybody on the planet. But I mean, going from doing cover shows to doing that, like that, what was the mental gymnastics to trying to like figure out how to ride that up? Yeah, like when did you and how did you start writing hit? I mean, legit hits. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. Not, yeah. Can you not, tell not, me like, how you wrote hits? Because yeah, I would like tell to know me that. How? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Here's yeah. the formula. Um, I think when you start being like painfully honest with yourself and the listener, Mm. And you stop hiding behind metaphors, and you really just start, you know, putting it all out there. Yeah, that's when I cracked the code. Fuck that, yeah! That, Dude, I'm not, that's and awesome. I'm not talking about writing hits. I'm just talking about writing, writing, you know, learning your craft. I'm talking about just songwriting, mm -hmm. you know, because I just kept getting like so many people just like, "What's a song about? What's a song about? How good of a songwriter can I be if everyone just keeps asking that?" Because I'm mm. hiding behind these metaphors, and then when you just put it all out there. Like everything, like too bad. For instance, like growing up in a single, single parent home, like you don't have to ask what that song's about. Right. You know, like uh, never again. You know, it's about domestic violence. You know, these things. Like how you remind me. It's like being in this relationship with somebody that, that's. It's just going down the tubes. Right. Um, you know, I knew that when people stopped asking me what these songs were about, that I was obviously starting to get a little bit better at songwriting because I wasn't hiding behind those metaphors anymore. And wow. it was like, you know, because you're bringing the listener along for a ride. Right. If you got done a movie and we're like. 
I have no idea <laughs> what the fuck I just watched for two hours there. I'm just lost. It's like watching every no Christopher idea. Nolan movie. Right. I have no yeah, idea what exactly. the fuck just happened. Right. Exactly. Like that, that, you know, you want to be a good storyteller. You want to, if you're writing something, you know, and you want, you want to bring the reader in. You want to, you know, you want, if you're making the movie, if you're directing it, you want to bring the viewer in. For me, it's like I got to bring the listener in. I got to take them along this ride and I got to make sure I'm painting the picture for them. Now, you get to put your own, you, you get to put your own your own mini movie on in your own head. Right. But I, I've got to steer you, you know, the best I can. That's deep because we've had a lot of songwriters on here. We've never Dude, gotten some of the best advice and insight we've ever heard on this show. Seriously, that's, that's fucking awesome. great. I'm a songwriter. I'm going to steal the shit out of that. I'm going to go home <laughs> and write the most brutally honest yeah. song about myself that's yep. going to scare people. Yes. I'm dead serious. Yes. Do you ever get like reactions from your, like you write these brutally honest songs and someone in your family hit you up and be like, was that about me? Like, you ever get anybody hit you up and be like, what was that really oh, about? Like, I've been avoiding my yeah. mother's calls for 22 <laughs> yes. years. Yes. I'm like, oh, it's her again. <laughs> Nickelback's new single, Therapy. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, so no, you guys... I brought, wait. I, actually, I brought my mom up in some interview. I can't remember what it was, and she wasn't happy. I, I can't remember why I spilled, you know, I spilled the beans on something. And it was like too many beans, too many beans, uh -huh. like a dark corner of the family's past that she's like, can you do me a favor, sweetheart? Is there any chance you could just leave me out of the interviews that you do? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. And I apologize. Imagine the conversation. I never do that again. Imagine the conversations Eminem had to have with his mom yeah. around that time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Guess what my mom's name is. Kim? <laughs> Fuck you, Debbie! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's some of that Canadian. Now I wasn't actually saying that to you, mother. No, 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 I'm just, I'm just quoting Eminem. She, Chad, she do you remember Eminem. that conversation we had about leading me out? Of the <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. So I'm wondering. I just finished all my lawsuits. <laughs> Fuck you, Debbie. You guys are from this wicked small town. Yeah. How did you get discovered? Playing. Well, we we moved to we moved to uh, uh, Vancouver. Okay. Yeah. We, so we we didn't but, get discovered in Hannah. Like. But you, I know, but you're still doing. Club shows, right? Yeah. Around town. Yeah. All you support yeah. opening for bigger acts. Yep. Who the, who were some of the like the, the acts you played? Who with put you on? Out? I'm trying to think, like a lot of Canadian stuff, a lot of stuff that you guys probably wouldn't know. Uh, who who do we play? Oh, we, Everclear, we opened for Everclear. We, we, did a, uh, we have did, Everclear we did, coming on in two weeks. Oh, Let's that right? go! Yeah. 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 We did a little run with them. them? Pl absolutely. Yeah, Please I tell me, said hi. Like, I fucking love them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't know Art personally but we we did a we did a tour down in the states with them just a short one real short one that's yeah. great but um, we also but we went across canada too yeah we did with my big black boots and my old suitcase we that's did <laughs> we did uh big big sugar it was a band from canada we played a lot with lots with those guys uh, yeah. big wreck we did a run with them when they first came out we opened for those guys for for a, a tour um we we had this kind of mantra when we were working in canada trying to get down to the states before we even got a deal we're like our agent was like, just open for people until they won't let you open for them anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Like until you're like, it, you're in the nicest way, you're a bit of a threat to the You're show. showing them up, yeah. Well, yeah, and you're not trying to be a, a deliberate asshole, but you're trying, like you're, yeah. we're out there, they're gonna bring the asses in the seats, we're gonna do our best to kind of yeah. share fans. And uh, it really seemed to click. So that's, that's kind of how it worked. And then we got very lucky when we signed a deal. We didn't have a manager at the time. We signed a record deal. We figured that one out. And then um, couldn't find a manager. <laughs> couldn't find somebody <laughs> to manage us. We have a deal. Nobody, no. So we did it, and then we got a tour with. Um, uh, we got an uh, opportunity to tour with Three Doors Down when they had their song was just starting to kind of lift off a little bit. Kryptonite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was clubs. It was like 500 seat clubs with them for quite a while. And then when that really started to hit its apex, then they bumped up venues, and then we got to go along for the ride. Wow. And that really was a, a good run for us in the States. <laughs> remember this. Like, really was a big part remember of how things got Do you remember how, how many records we sold our first week? Oh, was it seven? <laughs> pro pro 7,000, sorry, man. No, oh, no. my God, I think we had seven total. Oh, no, that was in Canada. That was no. our first week in Canada. Seven, no, yeah. we sold 1,000 records our first week, and we okay. were like, we sold 1,000 records in a week? Because we'd been doing this ourselves, right? We, like, oh, we yeah, had, we're like, we'd sold awesome. like 10,000 CDs ourselves, at, 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 you know, I'm calling up radio stations. I'm speaking to the program directors. We're, like every time we get an ad at a radio station, my brother Mike, who's not here with us right now, um, he would make sure that we had you know product in all the stores, and they would just take them on consignment, right? And we were just we were our own machine. Wow. We were doing it all, and so then once once we got signed to, to Roadrunner. We sold a thousand records our first week, and I'm like, "Holy shit!" And they're like, "No, that's not good. <laughs> no, that's, that's not that's, very good. This that's is not America, good. dude. That's not good." Canada. You well, know. And then we like, cause I remember we started off, and and uh, 
we were opening up for Three Doors, and Three Doors' first week was 16,000. And I'm like, 16,000? And then it went to 20, and then it went to 30, then it went to 50. And in like a very short, we, a sh- very sh- small, small amount of time, they were selling 100,000 copies a week. And, and, and like, we, I'm like, we got to stay on this tour. We got to get the next tour. So what we would do every single time is we would like get off stage. We would tell everybody we're going to go to the, the, the merch booth. We're going to sign autographs for you guys. We would just, you know, sell T-shirts and whatever right there. So we're doing that little, that little gag. And then we would try and pick up as many women as we could. And we'd get them on our bus. And like all the backstage passes. We'd just get as many girls on there as we could. And then they would come on after the show and literally just walk through like it was a market. And each one of them just grab it. Like, boys, hey, come on. Welcome to the bus. And they loved it. And we just like, we're just like, just please keep us on tour. And yeah. like, <laughs> we got to keep these guys on the road. Oh, yeah. I remember like. These guys are cool. Like Todd. Todd was the bass player at the time. And Todd, <laughs> Todd was just like. Good time, Todd. We are never, ever going to have anybody else open up for us. <laughs> and I'm just like. And we would just do everything we could to stay on the road with these guys. It was fantastic. Brilliant. And the next thing you know, you know, we're out of the 500 seat clubs. And then all of a sudden we're doing House of Blues everywhere. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, we're doing amphitheaters opening up for these guys. And they were exploding. We were. We had an album cut that we were calling our first single <laughs> you know? uh, you're uh, playing that game uh, no i mean literally it was our first game our first uh, song was called leader of men and it's an all right song it's an okay but they had a fu- they had a bona fide hit like they had kryptonite right and uh it was i mean we were all just off to the races you know and then we went in and, and uh, we came out with uh, uh how you remind me uh, on the next one and uh I'm like, oh, we get to headline. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you do know there's somebody at Barstool who actively like is the biggest Nickelback fan alive, right? No idea. Glenny Balls. Yeah. We have to have him in here. Glenny I Balls? I, I expected him to. Where's Glenny Balls? Glenny, Glenny Balls? Glenny Balls actually just had, uh, he runs a show with, uh, he like talks about OnlyFans. Like mm-hmm. the, you know the website? With, yeah, yeah. The, uh, and he had somebody come in and twerk to Nickelback. Love him, and it went viral. Where's, so where is Glenny Balls? We got to get him in here. Just text him. He's I, coming in. He was supposed to. Am be I in saying here. that right? Glenny, Glenny Balls. Yeah. Glenny. Glenny. Glenny Balls. Right, Glenny Balls. I love it. Yeah. So he needs to come in here, and you, I, I want him to be able so to. So that sit. other that other segment I was doing, where you asked me where I got the wine. Yeah. They asked me what I was doing in town, and I said, "Oh, I'm here to interview Nickelback. Ever heard of him?" Glenny's in the back, and he's like, "No fucking way!" Right. <laughs> no, this, is, this guy is. It is funny because, like, I I don't know, like, I know, like. Rockstar started doing numbers on TikTok and stuff like that. Do you guys pay attention to that kind of shit, or is it just kind of like? Um, you can say no because I. No, but like, tell but us. Yeah, like we've been told. Like Brad, Brad works as a band over there. Is Brad? Is oh, here's Glenny. Glenny Balls. Glenny <laughs> <laughs> Balls. Let's go. Told him. Told him. Uh, hey, dude, Daniel. Nice to meet you. These guys are just Pleasure telling us that you're like, they're a big fan, and we, like we like we got to get, <laughs> <laughs> get this guy in here. Where, where do you want me to go? Grab this mic. You can grab my mic if you want to, dude. Grab yeah. it. There. Should I sit down sure. in front of you? Is this okay? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Glenny, tell That's me awesome. how much it means to you. What? We're tell just... me how much it means to you. Dude, I fucking love you guys. <laughs> I fucking love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. You're the Thank best. You. Thank I'm you. fucking hyped for this weekend. I'm going to come Sunday night. Nice. Very excited about that. Awesome. But yeah, no, you guys are the best. Okay, awesome. so if I see you in the crowd, because like, what we like to do is we like to do rock star karaoke. Yeah. So we bring people up on stage. Uh-huh. Uh, can, <laughs> can you sing? Can you sing? And they're like, you have to be your biggest fucking fan. He's in the building. He absolutely loves you guys. So he comes in. They bring him in. And uh, they're like, this. This is Glenny Balls. I'm like, Glenny Balls? First off, I love your fucking name. Second, I love that you love our band. Why don't you come up on stage with us up in Foxwood and we'll uh, we'll get you to sing uh, a rock star with us. He's like, I'm fuck, I'm there, I'm absolutely there. And we got Glenny around and Glenny. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Glenny Boss! Hold on. Let's get a mic for Glenny Balls here. Is, is, first, first off, is that your real last name? Is it's not. It's not. Okay. Of I course wanted, it is. I wanted to clear that up. Okay. Never ask a stripper her real name. <laughs> My real name's not Diamond. I wish it was. Uh, <laughs> so sorry. It's Charity. <laughs> Obviously. So Destiny sorry. coming right up. Apologies. Destiny, Diamond, Charity. I go by the All of it. Absolutely all of it. Okay. So we got, we got a speaker here for you because we got this shit shoved in our ears so we can hear. 
Hit a, hit a G for Glenny here. Can you do that? Yeah. All right, I'll get us started. And then we'll just kind of go back and forth and have some fun with this shit. Don't worry. And you this is a great fucking crowd. No matter what happens, they're gonna love you. No matter what, this is a great fucking crowd. And use the whole stage if you yeah. want to. Well, well, work with the stage. Well, well. Work with these people, okay? Once you get used to the way it sounds right here, you wanna walk around, go do your thing. You wrong. Okay, here we go. All right. Hold on, one second. What do we do? Let's do this in a minute. Let's see. Here we go. Come on! I'm gonna listen to it. Can. Dude, dude, I'm the worst I'm singer good. ever, <laughs> and and like and, and like I have conned the entire world into like this is I'm running the best longest con ever, <laughs> like <laughs> and this isn't hard, dude. All you gotta do is like I'm through with standing in line, the clubs will never get in, it's like the bottom of the ninth, and I'm never gonna win. We're never gonna win. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's fantastic. Do you want to sing, Dave? Dave, Dave wants to sing. Dave, sing, Dave. Dave wants to sing. He's like, I know the words. I'll sing it. <laughs> but yeah, I can fucking sing karaoke. Yeah. Let's go. I, so, so just get your arms up. They like to be like, do 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 do. I will, like, yeah, we'll get you up. We'll figure it out. Oh, we'll this get you is going to be great. We'll figure it out. Dude, you I can't what? wait to say no, Glenny Balls no, into the... No, into the, no into the, pressure. Like, ladies and gentlemen, Glenny Balls! Please do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be a little fucked up. I'll be a little tuned in, but I dude, words. Dude, dude, you're going to fit in perfect. Dude, We're all going to be, be a little great. fucked up. It's a party. Oh, so we told them about the clip you had go viral. <laughs> oh, yeah, with Scott show. Legend. Oh, if you're tired of wasting your time with the same old shit, we finally got a botany on the stands. <laughs> they need to they need to they need to see it and the twerking was done to what song uh oh that was to ruby that was ruby rose we <laughs> talked about it multiple times so ruby rose we actually could so it was rockstar but we couldn't put it in we had to mix it up oh uh, because uh, copyright, copyright, copyright shit. So there was, there's a guy out we would have given actually, it to you for free dude <laughs> I don't, Hands I mean, that's down. Thing. There's a guy out there that I've been told that you can't copyright, even if I were to sing it, it's still a copyright thing. That's yeah. what the guy's trying to It can be. Yeah, because, okay, so, yeah, because there's the, there's the master use, and then there's the sync <laughs> license. I mean, I'm assuming yeah. you guys know more than me. But, uh, no, no, but the only person who can sue you is Warner Chapel that owns the publishing. And they would have to call me well, first and well, be like, I'd be like, no, 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 no. Okay, hey, for future balls, reference. Anything. Yes. Future reference. Yes. I'll use it again. Yes. <laughs> dude, Hell yeah. dude, dude, dude. Carte blanche. I don't know what that Heart means. That means you got that full range. It's Francais. It's Francais. All you. That's, that means it's all we you. We speak French. Yeah. Use whatever yeah. you want. Use whatever so you want. Was, we had Ruby Rose, who's a wonderful lady, twerk to it. She did a great job. <laughs> and then we had uh, Sky <laughs> Bree mention it as well. And Sky Bree's probably like Ruby the Rose, queen of Sky Bree. Right <laughs> the, these names. Uh... You should check him out if you don't know. Him. <laughs> <laughs> really, check him out if you don't know. Him. I'll be honest, you're missing out. They're they're great. They're You're not, the inspiration. They're studs. The second we're done here, what do you think I'm going to be doing? <laughs> I'll send you the link. Like, I'll get your free trial. You I'll text them right now. I'll get your free trial. See, this is a two-way street. Yeah. No, right. they're Sky Bree is. You like, use our content. You show me yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull up some Sky Bree content right now if you want me to. But she's the best. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you're going to sing? Right. On Sunday? Yeah, yeah, I will. I 100% will. Amazing. Perfect. That's allowed. Right. You tell me. Perfect. I'll be there. Awesome. Amazing. Right. Well, hey, this is a good talk. Everybody. Make, <laughs> hell yeah. make sure right. someone's there filming. Yeah, yeah. I got please. my buddy coming with me. I'm making right. it. Okay, hold on a second. But, okay, so that's Brad. Yes, sir. What did you think of texting like a month ago? I know. <laughs> oh. I know. That's why I shook his head first. There we oh. go. Oh. Brad, in in Brad right. knew of the man, the myth, the legend, yes. Glenny Balls. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenny Balls. Glenny Balls. Thank you, guys. Right. You guys are the best. All right. Thank you, Dante. Thank you, Glenny. <laughs> Great to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you, man. Holy fuck. Man, world colliding. This is magic. <laughs> Meant to be. I feel like we just granted a wish right there. That was. <laughs> so why don't? <laughs> it is, it is Holy shit. So why don't you guys? That was a great segue to plug 
uh, Sunday. What's going on? So we're doing – we've got two more of these uh, – I guess you call them like an underplay. We're just doing these um, – so where are we playing? Starland this? Ballroom. Starland Oh, great Ballroom. room, by the yeah, way. Yeah, like this legend kind of club. It holds like 2,000 people or something like that. So we're going to go. We're going to play that one. And then we're going to go to Connecticut, and we're doing something else there. And Foxwoods. Like, Foxwoods. Nice. There you go. Uh, the casino? Yeah, yeah. Cause, and we did one on Toronto, like I was talking about, for my birthday. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we're just – it's all about, like, talking about – it's all – uh, you know, it's really about launching this record. You know, it's it, we're talking about it everyone. Hence why we're here. We're, yeah. we're, we're we're in the washing machine, dude. This is our second interview in the building. <laughs> Bro, the thing the thing I find interesting too is like for being the rock stars you are. Like I feel like you're almost at a point where you, just the conversation, you feel very comfortable. Like you feel like you're very mm -hmm. like at ease with like fucking who you are and the music that you're making. Like that that's amazing to see because we talk to some people and it's like these guys don't even know who they are. You guys seem like fucking very <laughs> happy and excited for this fucking record to come yeah, out. Yeah, well, we've had twenty years, twenty five years of practice of trying to get comfortable in our own skin with this band. Like it's a, uh, it's a, uh, dude, it's a dream job. Like we get to make music. And, you know, it's just like I say in the in the song, like everybody wants to be a rock star. Like when you meet the, the celebs and you meet uh, like uh, like the biggest, the big, the actors, the sports stars, everybody. And like they all say the same thing. Every single one of them uh, says, you know what I really want to do? You know, you, you've you seen me hit a golf bar. Or you've seen me like do whatever. Like you've seen me uh, put the puck in the back of the net or you've seen, me, you know, my movies, whatever it is. But they all say the same thing. You know what I really want to do? I want to be a rock star. Yep. Every single one of them. Facts. And what do you think I say right back to him? You I'm want like, to play I'm hockey? Like, I'm like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be a rock star too. You know? But you accomplish it. Wow. Which is fucking crazy. There's oh. moments. Yeah. <laughs> there are moments when you feel like a rock star. There's moments when you definitely don't feel like a rock star. Yeah. What? what, like, so you guys have been through fucking everything. Like, I feel like you got, and mm. I, I mean, it's not like we're talking to, you know, some, you know, reunion tour or anything like that. You yeah. guys are still in the thick of things but what was it like going through the peak of the peak that we were just talking about and then that era not era but that period where mm -hmm. it just became trendy yep. to you know hate on you guys which i still don't really understand mm -hmm. uh, like like it's lemmings yeah, we, we've lemmings, lemmings is the right lemmings. word dude <laughs> the lemmings. um group it, think it, it's it's uh yeah, I mean, like, we were the whipping boy for uh, the longest time, uh, in, you know, in the music business, like, to the point where even we were joking about it. Like, we were the most memed band and all that stuff. And, like, yeah. but it's um, like, but, like, um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you look go. At this graph. Yep, yeah, yeah, look yeah. at this graph. Yeah, look at this graph. Dude, I introduce the song like that all the time. Do you? Uh, absolutely. I'm like, for anybody born in a certain year, this next song's called Look at This Graph, and the crowd goes <laughs> nuts. They oh, think yeah. it's hilarious. And all their parents are kind of, you know, it's like you got all the kids in the front and all the parents are in the back like it's like you're bringing the whole the whole family to this damn show and i'm like for everybody else this is photographed let me hear you sing along <laughs> you know it's that kind of thing but like yeah we've run the gamut um and 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 it you know thankfully that it, it's become cyclical you know it's come around and it's at the point now where we just call it the softening like there's been a softening on the band people have put the teeth away yeah and 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 like you were just suddenly it's just like the love is coming in from everywhere and it's it's great like it feels great i've said this on the podcast before but i feel like you guys are like rock and roll's guy fieri to the point where like people in the beginning like were like hating on guy fieri for no reason right. now he's the most beloved human being in the culture to where now it's like fucking dude nickelback's awesome what the fuck are we talking about <laughs> because it's sick you guys have i'm gonna give you an hour to stop doing that <laughs> <laughs> I never you're just good dude if you just keep pumping the tires it feels wonderful i never understood <laughs> i never understood it and to his defense dave since the day i met him this is the god's honest truth yeah. has been your guys like defender uh, besides gunny like, balls dude like, thank besides you, balls. that's awesome thank you appreciate it's, that it's actually. like i said it's 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 group thinking i mean not everybody has to like you guys that's a sub musical sure. taste subjective you know but it's like oh you listen to nickelback it's like shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah you listen to nickelback and they right. got awesome fucking songs for the last you know two plus decades so yeah, yeah let me be so my my girlfriend like she got me into the whole you know like where we're watching the whole the pizza reviews right we're just like i'm, I'm like mm -hmm. what are you what are you constantly watching like why are you why is this guy why is this guy on the corner because I, I, I just kind of got like one eye on it and what's with the whole like you know one bite everybody knows the rules and, you know i start looking over and i'm watching this i'm like this is why am i so entertained by this <laughs> like I, and i'm just like i'm captivated and to the point where i'm like 
Seven point six. Give it. A, I could tell it's going to be like a seven point six. It's like seven point six. She's like, "Did you see that?" I'm like, "No, I have no idea." Like one of those things, right? And then he's opening gifts in one of them. Yeah. And he's like going through all these stuff and da, 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 And someone sent. So they're waiting for a reaction from him. And and a Nickelback CD comes out of the thing. Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Oh, I bet you guys think I'm going to say something shitty." Nah, it's a good band. Anyway, Fuck on, yeah, on to dude. the next thing. And I was just like, I'm like, I fucking love this guy. I fucking love this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, it was awesome. It was great, dude. Uh, and I, I will say, first single that came out was great. Uh, very excited for the record. What do people have to expect with the new record coming out? Like, it, did, did you guys go heavier on this? Well, the first single is definitely heavy. I mean, you know, we, we like to kick the, the door in. But, like, when you get that, that little like tease, that. Yeah, we got, we got to we gotta come out swinging. Um, but when you start off and you start teasing the album, you know, mm. and you get the... Like, when it starts off like that, everyone's like, Nickelback's gone metal? <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I was like, and so everyone's just like, this is going to be the hardest record yet. And I'm like, wait till you hear the whole record. Easy, 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 you know? No, because it's all over the map. You know, we got, the, we got that trip down memory lane. We got this one. We got this song called High Time. And it's really like, I, the, the movie that's in my head, it's like 70s, like early 70s probably. And there's a van, this old nasty van. You know what it smells like in there. And it's like, you're just going from f- festival to fest like city to city fe- concert to concert festival to festival you're picking up hitchhikers along the way and everybody right. and, and like every time you open up this you know the side doors of the van there's just clouds of smoke coming out of there and it's just so cheech and chong in my head right um so we we, we got you know we got the nostalgia 80s uh you know memory lane with uh those days you know you got san quentin you got the rockers you, you've got this this uh 70s it's almost like a country rock thing um it's all over the map it Fun. really is all over them it's, it's just everything and and our favorite record like my favorite records that, that we do are like that right you know when you listen to um uh the one record we had was called all the right reasons and you go through the the, the list of singles that were on that record it goes from every, like everything from like animals great song to photograph uh to um uh far away to if everyone cared to rock star to like uh, saving me. Saving me. There's so many hits on that fucking record, <laughs> <I know. laughs> God damn. It's, you know, thank you, but like, it, but it's all over the map. It's everywhere. You know, the side of the bullet, side of a bullet, you yeah. know, is on there too. So we've got the, the metal. I mean, it's just everything. And those are my favorite records that we make. And this one is just, it's, it's, it's that. It's, it's well balanced. It's all over the place. And there's something on there for everybody. Fuck really. It. Yeah. For, are you, so are you guys going on tour after this? Like, do we have a tour planned out? 2023. Yeah, tickets on sale hopefully early next year. Yeah. Do we plan on doing mostly old stuff? Because I always, I always ask this question as the band go out on tour, like promoting a new record. Are we going heavy on the new record, or what are we doing here? On the new tour, um, we're going to go. Hang on a sec. Before we answer, what do you guys prefer? I'm curious. <laughs> no, what it, do the, you prefer? This is an internal question that bands talk about. What do, you, what, do you, what do fans like to hear? Do they like to hear old stuff or a n- little bit of new stuff, no new stuff? So I'm personally over all new music being geared towards the radio yeah and everything being single yeah driven i know that's label sure you know that's been going on for 50 years right? forever <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know what you're saying though i know what you're saying yeah, yeah. But I, I, yeah we hear so, you. you're looking for some depth at some point like yeah if, so if i you're mean a fan of the band personally artist, when i go and see acts that i grew up loving i love to hear the stuff that i would listen to before there was on-demand streaming stuff so not the deep cuts but you know the tracks that weren't beat to death on MTV and the radio, but they're still nostalgic. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, how how old are you? If I, if I can ask, I'm uh, curious. Thirty eight. Okay, so it's like I, I'm just the reason I'm asking is because when we were growing up, it was like we would li- you listen to the album. Like it's albums yep. are albums for sure, but as a new music fan, it was like albums. You listen to the whole bloody album. Yeah. Right. And so yeah, I I know what you're saying. That's our eternal question is that we've got songs we like to play that are not necessarily singles. Uh, but then it starts to get what you know. We've got that strange problem, great problem to have is that you've got stuff that a lot of stuff that people recognize. So do you fill it up with stuff that they may not? But you'll excite a lot of real dedicated fans. Yes, like this, uh, which is which. Is, it's nice to sneak those in, but it's like you try to find that balance. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's a great problem to have, but it's really tough when you're like, we got to leave out too bad or saving me or or this tonight, and they're like. Songs that it's good sing along songs. Is there anything you're tired of playing yet? 
Like just one of those hits where you're like, if I have to play this one more time, <laughs> I go. Oh, there it is. Exactly. If we if we got, if we say it though, we're gonna ruin it for all the people yeah, that like. Yeah. Don't, don't say it. Don't say it. it. It's it's. Uh, I I really don't. Because be you honest. got you got to remember you're you got to treat the show like it's the first time everybody yes. there is. Yeah. Seen yeah. You. Yes. If you leave them, you know, like some of these fucking two cool bands will purposely not play those songs and. Yeah. It's a shit experience for the fans. Exactly. See? So now you've gone now you're going back the other way. Yeah. yeah. You know, so now you're, no, Dave, what 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 would you want to hear? It's, it's it's I get it from both perspectives and obviously I can't speak on a rock band or any any musicians like from that perspective, but like I've seen John Mayer probably a dozen times, and he leaves out a lot of his hits. Yeah. And every time I go, I'm like, man, I wish he would have played this or that or whatever, you know. But at the same time, he's promoting a new album, so sure. he wants to turn you know half those songs into massive hits, like Continuum from 15 years ago, you know. Yeah. So I I get it. I mean, you guys have, man, I didn't even like we just rattled off like six hits. <laughs> seven. Hits. You can't leave out that you have to play the hits. I know, and, that, <laughs> and that's from one album. That's the one well, that's, 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 that's one. So that's one record. So, so, you, yeah. so then you piss off fans that don't that want to hear something else. It's I know it's a it's a tough it's, one, right? You know, it's then we get to bur- we get to burn it to the ground, you know, and then we get to like, you know, all these different tunes. You know, that go back to Silver Side Up. There's never again. There's too bad. Someday, gotta be. You somebody. know, someday, like, someday. Finite yeah. amount of time on stage, right? Like we got 34 singles. There's no fucking way. <laughs> I cannot well, sing well, 34 shit. songs I'm in one night. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to yeah. think. Like, like we're we're gonna solve this problem right Let's here. Let's solve it. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Anybody have a whiteboard or an abacus? We can get started. Yeah, yeah. Abacus. Good idea. Like play animals into like the start of animals into three or four songs, oh. and then end with animals. Oh, a medley. Do, a medley. do the Metallica yeah, medley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've right. done that too because that's that's yeah. kind of how you solve that to a degree. You just do a little medley. Yeah, it's like you give a little taste. A potpourri of hits. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I know it's weird. That that's point. why we don't let Daniel name these things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you do a fucking hey, Vegas residency. I like over here? sprinkling. Yeah. I like dusting. Come out yeah. and see Nickelback this week for a potpourri of hits. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be great. I love it. Well, I was always I was always on the side of like. I'd Such rather, aromatic hits as. <laughs> <laughs> I was always on the side of like, I'd rather see the songs I know. And then I saw Gary Clark Jr., who I think is one of the best guitar players alive yes, right now, great. right before right before COVID happened. And he played the entire new record. And I left that night and I was like, fuck that, dude. I didn't hear anything I wanted to hear. And then I went home and I listened to the new record and I got obsessed with that record. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm concurring with that one because uh, in – Complete, out of completely left field. I remember when we moved, first moved to Vancouver, I went and saw Toad the Wet Sprocket. Was oh, a yeah. big, I was I love that band. And they were just uh, promoting Dulcinea mm. um, right after their big hit uh, album before that. Walk on uh, the Ocean. Fear, I think, yeah. Uh, before that, one after that one, yeah. But but that was kind of my point. I went in there expecting to hear like Walk on the Ocean. All this, and we did hear those, but I knew that whole album front to back, but they played most of, of Dulcinea. And I was like, and it was weird because I was like, yeah, I, li- I like it. I do like it, but I was expecting the other ones. Tough to sing it along made, to something it, I haven't heard before. No, 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 no. Maybe it made me when I went when I went home. I went and listened to it because this is obviously before iPod, so I had to wait to get back to my CD player. And uh, I, I every time I played a song from it, I'm like I remember that, I remember that, I remember that from all from that night. And it's it was one of my favorite albums almost yep. because of that. I don't know if that's the formula, but I experienced that where I appreciated it more when I went back and they did play a lot from that album. It, I think it made me connect with it more. I don't know. That's awesome. We're, yeah, that's cool. We're probably going to play <laughs> the, long, the longest answer to a question ever. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're probably going to play a couple, two, possibly three songs. We, like, we started the, the show the other night with um, uh, San Quentin, and like the crowd went nuts. I was going to say, it's like, a great start to a show yeah, song. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. like it, it, well, here's a question for you guys. Do you... With um, I know it's probably different with streaming numbers versus you know album sales and all that. But do you do you anticipate having like a photograph or an animals on this new album where you're like, holy shit? God, I hope it. so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I fucking well, hope so. I don't know. When when you wrote photograph, did you know that was going to be a, just a monster? No. You no. you know you know what. Wait, really? What are going to, I think we've got a pretty good instinct as to what is going to be received 
well. Mm. How well? You, I don't think you can ever tell because that honestly right, yeah. is timing is is a part of that, and and that's like well, what kind of timing? I don't know. Like you did sometimes it's just those. That's a kind of a magic element. It's the best I can. Mm-hmm. Put I think we were think. shocked when those those singles on that album dropped, and it was just gangbusters. Like that's the album I joined the band. My audition, oh, wow. my audition in the studio. Oh, so was you're the far reason away. that Nick's back. Is That's Nick the back. reason you sold uh, a bazillion <laughs> albums. Yeah, everything yep. changed when I showed up. Yep. Motherfuckers. But, <laughs> yeah. but for example, like we did, like it, speaking of no fix to dress, when we were talking about the floor rider thing, we did. Um, uh, she keeps me up. This kind of funk tune. And I was like, "This is a great song. This is I gonna, love that song. This is going to be a hit." And, and it, it just went. <laughs> Never saw the light of day. We even hard, played it live, and the energy was just yeah. like you can never. Uh, nobody knew. But then, there you go, because uh, nobody knew the tune. Yeah, so we but played then it right live, now, and it was like it's got a whole new life. And yeah, TikTok. TikTok's it's just like our number three downloaded song now. We're like, holy yeah, shit, we're gonna play that wild. again now. I feel like we solved the problem here. There, there we go. go. That's, we that's it. We've taken up so much of your time, and I have to say, as a musician, I hope that one day I have the problem that you have, where I have so many fucking hits. I don't know too many hits. I hope you do too. Yeah, that's all we really want. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, guys. I have one thing. My friend is obsessed with you, and I, he will kill me if I let you leave without asking sure. this. It's sure. about photograph. Okay. What is on Joey's head? <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's, it looks like a mini Stanley Cup, uh, but it's actually like a, it's a, it's a, a wine chiller. It's just really elaborate, uh, uh, like a, like a champagne chiller, like like a decanter. Kind no, no, no. Of you just put you just. Oh, it's like an ice bucket. Oh, like it's, a, ice bucket. Yeah. it's a really fancy ice bucket, yeah. Wow. And like I don't know how that thing wound up on his head, but like when the I'm guessing w- you were drunk. When I started doing the, that that riff and then like you know we're, I'm letting the two the two uh, top strings, you know the E and the B ring, throughout the entire progression. So as it goes around, it gets really orchestral. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know what the hell made me say it. And I just kind of like, I don't know who up there is like, oh, he's fucking stuck. He doesn't have a line. <laughs> Look at this photograph, moron. And I just fucking. He's got to go Look working in the attic up there in his house. And I just fucking. Stop, stop, I just kind of. It kind of came out of my mouth. And I'm like. And then I said, and every time I do, it makes me laugh. Mostly just because it kind of rhymed with the first one, right? And I'm like, well, what fucking photograph I got that makes me. And then I, I went. I just thought right to that because in the house, I've got a fucking bar. You know, and that picture's been sitting there, and it's still sitting there. And people that come over to my house, if it's their first time, they're like, is that the, that's the fucking, I'm like, that's the one. And they pick that shit up, and everybody wants to do the same thing. Wow. They want to they get their picture fucking taken with it, right? Amazing. But yeah, and then. Yeah, the, it's you and Joey in the picture. Yeah. And, Your and eyes are both red as fucking <laughs> high. Dude, we were so fucking high. Like, real fucking high. <laughs> and, and like. Don't do drugs, kids. Yeah, don't do drugs. Um, and uh, but if you do write a really big hit, do, song exactly. about it. make sure it's a big hit. So yeah. the funny thing is, my other buddy is in the picture, and he's got his hand up like this, yeah, and he's trying to grab the champagne chili because it's it's just getting ready to fall off Joey's head, and he's just getting ready to grab it and steady it, and he's in the picture, and. My it's like butt- a hand model or yeah. something. It's Rob Mackey. <laughs> so Rob got cut out of the picture oh. by my but my other friend's girlfriend took the picture. She just made it Joey. She cut my buddy Rob out of the picture oh. and then gives it to me for a birthday present. She gives me this picture. He got cropped. And he's like, you know I was in that fucking picture, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't I didn't crop it. I didn't fucking you know this is oh, you know it was a gift, God. right? It's like I was in that I fucking picture. Oh my god! Yeah. What the hell was on Joey's head and, and and Rob's head? Like I gotta get a Rob's hand in there somehow. Yeah, we gotta squeeze the fuck Rob in there. Yeah. What the fuck? I mean, how am I? Oh, uh, I would Rob, be but... I would be pretty fucking pissed too. I'm not <laughs> yeah. gonna lie. He's a, he's a little bummed. Yeah. That's cropping before you could crop yeah. on a phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, you had to cut that shit out. Really yeah. like. I would yep. be, yeah, I would be pissed. But wow. you guys are fucking awesome. Yeah, this I was mean, fucking guys, amazing. Guys, ah, guys, dude, guys. Everybody, go buy the new fucking album. Go see the tour. Go see Gunny Balls sing. Gunny Balls. Gwenny balls, dude. Good Stream balls. the shit out of it. Drops tomorrow. Yes. Please. All platforms. Yeah. Guys. Everywhere. Everywhere awesome. you get music, That was a man. fucking great interview. Thanks, fellas. Hell yeah, boy. Dave, yeah. thank you so much for hanging around. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks, guys. guys. Thank you. Keep Chad. doing your thing. Well, uh, I'm thanks, super bro. pumped for the new album. Thanks, thanks man. Brother. Hope, you, hope you guys dig it.